that I'll do. And this one particular song is called Wonderful Merciful Savior. And there couldn't be anything more proper, proper to say than talk about our Savior Jesus Christ. He is a wonderful, mercy, merciful Savior and our Redeemer. And that's what we need to preach and teach uh, to the congregations and in our surrounding area. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. And He will redeem, save, cleanse, and make brand new someone who humbly understands that they're a sinner. They understand that without Christ, they're bound for a devil's hell. And that's the first thing, as we were talking earlier, that's the first thing one must understand is that they're lost. That without Christ, they're doomed. Mm -hmm. There will be, this will be your best life now. I don't like that term in particular. Right. But if you're, if you're, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord, your Savior, and your God, this is the best you'll ever have it. Mm -hmm. It just gets worse from here when you pass from this life to the, to the next. And it says that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. And Christ made the way on Calvary as a wonderful, merciful Savior. The gospel is this, that Jesus came. He was born of a virgin. He lived on this earth 30-some years. He was hung on a cross. He was beaten for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. You know, sometimes I see these, these pictures of Christ on a cross and, and it's just a little drop of blood running down His cheek. That is so wrong. If you know anything at all about what he was beaten with, and the way I understand it, it was with a whip, but in that whip there were shards of bone. And every time that those lashes were raked across him, it tore flesh. He was a bloody mess. And then as you go on and you think about the crown of thorns that was placed on his head, those were literally a crown of thorns. And when those were pierced in his skull, he was a bloody mess. But He's the perfect Lamb. He's the perfect Lamb of God. And He hung on that cross and when He said, it is finished, that means there's nothing left to do. There's no more need for animal sacrifices. We can't work our way to heaven. We can't do anything to make ourselves saved until we are convicted by the sweet Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Savior. I'm as lost as a duck in a hailstorm and there's absolutely nothing I can do to make myself holy and make myself right with God other than falling at the feet of Jesus. Someone once said the, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how you act, whatever the case may be, Jesus will save you. And then He died on that cross. And before He did, once again, He said, it is finished. It's complete. And not only that, He was buried in a borrowed tomb. In a borrowed tomb. But three days later, He didn't stay dead. He got up. And then He was seen by multiple hundreds of people. Many, many people. And then He was taken up to heaven to sit at the right hand of God to be our intercessor. He is now our high priest. Yes. We don't need a man priest. Mm -hmm. Man can do nothing for me. Man cannot change me from the inside out. Listen, we were talking again earlier. When someone trusts Christ, they don't just get a little religion. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no such thing. It's not about baptism. It's not about joining the church. It's not about raising your hand. It's not even about praying a little prayer. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing that I'm a lost, hell-bound sinner and there is no hope for me besides trust and faith and belief in Jesus Christ as my one and only Savior that's able to change me from the inside out. I like to say this. How can... Someone as big as Jesus, as big as God, as big as the Holy Spirit, come and live inside you and there not be a transformation takes place. Cindy and I were talking. Some of us are slower than others. It's a, it's a process. It's a sanctification process that continues as we 
live this life and go on to our next life. That is what these folks want you to hear on WDFB is that Jesus is the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Who did He come to save? He said, I came in to seek and to save that which is lost. So you might belong to a church. You may have raised your hand in a prayer meeting. You may have been baptized. You may have prayed a little prayer. You may have been manipulated into coming to an altar. But you know down deep in your heart, down in your soul, that you're not right with God. It's impossible. It's impossible. Again, for someone as big as Christ and the Holy Spirit of God come and live in you and there's not a change. Listen, I'm afraid I'm a Baptist. I've always been a Baptist so I can't speak of any other denomination. I love them. I've got wonderful friends in almost every denomination that believe in Christ as their Lord or Savior and God. But I'm afraid our church pews are f partly occupied by people who have never known that they were lost. Yeah. Who have never known to the point where they say, I can't do it, but Jesus can. It's like the tax collector said. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Yeah. That's what happened. He was merciful to him, a sinner. Do you remember the thief on the cross? Now that thief, he couldn't get baptized. He couldn't join a church. He couldn't do anything. That day, he was going to die. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit spoke into his life and spoke into his heart and he saw Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but today you'll be with me in paradise. He couldn't join a church. He didn't get baptized. He just trusted in Christ as his Lord, his Savior, and his God. And that day he was with him in paradise. So I would beg you and I would plead with you with everything that I have in me that you would run to Jesus. Know that you're lost. Know that without him there is absolutely no hope whatsoever. And fall at Jesus' feet, so to speak. And say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And now I want to sing this song, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Amen.